I have a surprise for you. Hey. <laughs> How's the glow? Is there glow coming off of it? It needs a truck when you've got a CTSV. Yeah, it's basically a truck. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh -huh. one piece that we waited so, so long for has finally arrived. Need your help now. I'm not gonna be able to do this one hand. I don't think you can. Just don't drop it. Now marry him. <laughs> it's supposed to be doing the thing. Why isn't it doing the thing? <laughs> so we need to buy the new bolts and we'll grab a flex plate from next door. So what are you going to do that you're not supposed to be doing? This is how you get the whole internet booty tickled. <laughs> Two Aga Agas. It's up to spec. He's ruining it. Oh! Oh! That was three. That's three over. Agas. It's over torque. Oh no. <laughs> Specked. Ooh. Impact didn't get that one very tight. Impact was way off. Oh. 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 This is lined up with that bell housing bolt. So all we need, and this is lined up with this bell housing bolt. So hopefully when we slide this up on there, we don't have to adjust it too much in order to get the bolt back in. This is how close I get every time. Do I crank it? Oh. Try it. Might be too tight. Oh, oh, oh they're oh, moving together. It, tried. it didn't move all the way together. No. There we go. Oh, oh. And that's how it should work when everything. <laughs> Butter. When it's working correctly. So this is what I hate the absolute most of building any project is when you have to get bolts. So we had to go get our transmission mount bolts, minus one. And these are our motor mount plate bolts. And this is exactly what $30 <laughs> gets you. <laughs> you get this much hardware for 30 bucks. I am a millennial and I will buy $18 coffees and not bat an eye. <laughs> but when I have to spend $30 on nuts and bolts, I kind of have a tendency to freak out a little bit. <laughs> We had people asking some really cool questions in the last video. Um, and one of those questions was, how does the, how does the snowcat steer? Like what, how does it work? So I'm gonna kind of talk about that real quick. Basically, if you look inside, you can see this long rod. That boy. Yeah. <clears throat> so that right there is our hydraulic ram. That's our articulation assembly. And that is our front steering rod. All this thing uses to steer is one hydraulic ram that either pushes to turn right or sucks in to turn left. And the whole thing operates on a pivot. So, which that pivot point is 
That's this bottom plate. This bottom plate pivots from the, on the frame. This is a restrictor right here that bolts on there to keep it from over pivoting and damaging the ram. So it'll hit this plate before it does any of that stuff. Essentially, it just kind of twists itself one way or the other by using that hydraulic ram. What is pretty similar to like how a monster truck steers. It's the same look. Not the same mechanic, but the same uh, situation. Concept. Yep. So <clears throat> that back has a pivot point too, which you might not be able to see. It's right above the rear differential there. But yeah, essentially that's all it's got to keep itself turning. <clears throat> uh, hydraulic ram is controlled. Obviously there's a hydraulic pump system, which is what all of this is. And then the steering wheel is kind of unique. So the steering wheel is just basically a valve. So if you turn it one way, the pressure goes in and makes the ram do one thing. And if you turn it the other way, the pressure goes out to through the other side. I mean, these are bad, like bad descriptions, but <laughs> essentially all this is doing is changing the flow one way or the other. You've basically got a feed in, a pressure line in, and you've got a return line. All going through there, which are all connected to that steering column. This is our 4L60. This is the transmission that we rebuilt. Um, we have inside of this transmission, uh, there was a lot of learning. We, we don't really mess with automatic transmissions hardly like at all. We replace stock units, but we don't do the performance side. We use uh, T56s for RLS motors. We do have a heavy duty torque converter inside of here. We have upgraded bands inside of the transmission, which fun fact, we had to learn how these transmissions operate. The first gear of an automatic transmission is an actual gear of this particular one. The second gear, or what you would perceive as a gear, is actually bands inside the transmission getting tighter or looser, kind of like the way a snowmobile operates. And then you have third and fourth and overdrive lockout, which is just a combination of those bands and gearing things. So it is still, yes, it's a 4L60, so it's a small case transmission, but everything on the inside is upgraded to Kevlar bands. Um, we got the stronger gear set. It's just done. So this is what $2,000 worth of 4L60 looks like. Just in preparation for some of the comments, why didn't you use a 4L80? Because <laughs> we had 4L60s. <laughs> um, two wheel drive 4L80s around our area are going for like $1,500 because they're what hot rodders want for automatic transmission stuff. Uh, they're way more expensive. We can get core 4L60s, which we call, even if it's a good transmission, we still call it a core because these things do have a tendency to be kind of blowy uppy. So they're about 600 bucks. So there was a huge price difference there. Um, we fully built this transmission for about half price. Why didn't you just use a power glide? <laughs> because yet again, we have 4L60s <laughs> laying around. <laughs> we actually have two more of these transmissions uh, laying around. So, yeah, it's it, a lot of this hot rodding that you're seeing here. A lot of people have opinions on the motor we're using and stuff like that. It's because we have it, and this is what we know, and this is what we wanted to do. You know, if someone wants to fund our project, we'll, I would love to put a Cummins motor in here, but the, we don't have that kind of money. So this is what we get. This is what we're doing. So be happy with it. Yeah, is there any other... <laughs> What are the other comments? I don't remember what the other comments are. <laughs> they were good though. This is our old radiator, which we were kind of on the fence about using. We just kind of set it in there to sort of get um, idea for clearances. This right here is our transmission cooler, which is obviously extremely stout. Um, this is our horn. Beep, beep. The radiator itself is extremely stout as well. Yeah, this radiator is definitely for, I mean, that's, that's going to show you it was cooling down an overworking motor. That radiator's monster. Um, but if you look in here, we're doing great. 
We've got our fan. We've got plenty of clearances. We definitely have some major issues with our inlets and our outlets. We have out, we have in, whatever. I don't remember which one's which, but essentially that would be your in and that would be your out down there on the other side. So we are gonna have some figuring out to do. We might be able to use a different radiator setup. We don't know yet, but. Now we've got the fan shroud in place, which also acts as the top frame support for the hood. This is what the hood rests on when it's, it's put on there. So we need this piece, but that's a little bit of an issue. Just a tiny one. I mean, realistically, We've hit the nail on the head in so many different spots, which is really cool. Um, as far as this shroud, it's really kind of a, a pretty simple piece. It's just sheet metal that bolts to this radiator. So all we're really gonna do is just cut the bottom, the bottom support out of this and we'll be good. I mean, we were so ridiculously close to just nailing that whole thing. And plus, I know a guy with a water jet that could cut us a new hole that we could just weld on the back of this, so. Hey, I know him too. So that's a wrap on today's video. Next time, we're hoping to get that all finalized. We'll get our exhaust started. We might be able to get the drive line done and then the wiring harness and hopefully our first startup of this. So subscribe, stay tuned, look for that video. Should be happening in the near future. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're really putting the horse pressure in this one. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Ah. Ah.